Hello, my name is Nick and I'm going to show you a quick introduction to Blender 2.60 Alpha or 260A and you can download the latest version of Blender on blender.org forward slash download forward slash get blender you want to get the version that's best for your system if your if your machine has a 64 operating system you want to get the 64 bit version or otherwise you will not use all your RAM that you, that you should need to use or if you are running 32 bits and you download the 64 bit one you will not be able to run the 64 bit that being said when you open your blender the first thing you see is the splash screen it says Blender 2.60. It has a pretty much a, a community made little splash screen here. You have your recent files here and links to, to for donations, credits, the manual. You can just click to get out of there, and then you have a pretty much the the most primitive things. It's not really much use right there, but just to show that you have an object. Usually what people do is delete the cube because they don't need it. They usually press shift A and usually add a plane. They're scaled up. So you have a four right here. This big four. Press shift A. You can see here I'm also having the text pop up there when I press buttons. And let's add a cone and a couple other objects. A UV sphere. Add an icosphere, which is like a sphere but with less polygons. Okay, so this is pretty much a pretty basic scene we have. Okay, so the first thing is here you notice is like what's this? And what is this just hanging around there? This is your lamp, which is that one primitive that makes you have light. As you can see, here's a preview of the light, and so you could change. You don't want this specular or not? But you just just want the specular. You you could do a lot of settings with this. You can make it brighter, you can change the color. There are different types of lamps. There's a sun, which gives like global illumination. I have spotlight, which I think I'll use for this introduction. You have a hemi, which is more of an area light, but more concentrated. And you have an area light, which is pretty much a light made out of a square. So let's use a spot and by pressing F12 or render render image you get to see what our scene looks like. You can see the outside of the spotlight here. You can have, you can see the three objects here, but they look pretty dull if you ask me, and the shadows aren't exactly smooth. So let's just up the samples to like 32 and to change the material on on an object is to go to the materials tab click on new and then in the diffuse you can change the color so I'm going to make this one red and I'm going to do a new material for this one and I'm going to make it blue and this one to complete the color triangle to make this one green.
So now you have a basic scene with a red sphere, a blue cone, and a green icosphere. An external render comes in, like Lux Render, where you get these nice caustics because of a light, and cycles, which is going to be being going to be put into the internal renderer, where you have nice smooth caustics, along with photorealistic objects. Both of these are open source and free. Uh, Lux render is external and Cycles is more internal as its Cycles being is going to be moved into the trunk which should, it should be in the main release in February where you can actually download those versions on graphical.org and you just want to make sure that you're on the right the right version. And these these are these builds here are pretty stable. And I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna show you what else the materials tab can do. We have transparency with uh, ray trace and you can have mirror make an object shiny or you can just mess with like the specular so it has like a little red spot there As you can see it's behind there Or you can even do transparency and mirror, where it can be shiny and clear. Okay, now it's done. As you can see, you have the transparency of this, this partial. You have the reflectivity on this one and you have reflectivity and transparency on this so you can cause all, all kinds of artifacts to appear in there I'm going to delete all these, yeah that should be good now I want to show you the sculpt mode which Blender does support sculpting Yep, uh, a variety of brushes. So let's just do sculpt, and then pretty much you can draw over it to give it like to give it a texture. So nothing's just like like basic shapes. So you can turn the strength up a bit more harsher bumps. As this thing being a full like, render software, you have like, a whole deck of things. So say here I got, I'm going to draw some stuff on here, you have symmetry. It's, it's really easy to make faces and stuff. But then you notice, like, when you're done making this nice figure, you see all these squares. Usually what I do to get rid of them is in the modifiers you have subdivision surface where you can make it a lot smoother than it really is. And you could actively modify this you know, the higher this number, the more laggy it would be. So I could turn that down to 1. And then still be able to, to draw then.
Then I can still turn it up afterwards and see it. And basically all of this is made with the free program. It's a complete application suite where you have Okay, you've done your object and you want to make a move. Just go back into object mode and you want to do, you want to go down here, see this, this keyframe is, you want to click, click here and location, rotation, like depending on what you're doing. You should do. You should be fine with just location, rotation, or location. But if you want to spin it around, you want to do location, rotation, and scale, which you shouldn't run into much. But you should be fine with location, rotation. So, and then you press here to make a keyframe. Click that, and then you go ahead and move it up a couple frames and place it there another keyframe. I'll bring it up here, rotate it a bit, make it a keyframe. Actually, I forgot to move it forward. Can move it here, rotate it randomly upside down, a keyframe. I could scale it, but since I have ro location rotation, it's not going to keyframe it as it's going to stay that size. So we keep it like that. And you get as many keyframes as you want. Now go to the view of the camera by hitting numpad 0 or view camera and press alt A and you actually you will see this thing move. Up to now since my computer isn't really that powerful you will see some lag here. You can turn down the subdivision so it will go a lot much faster so you can see it's going like 24 frames per second which should be in the final render. Press escape to get out of there and you can pretty much move through here. You have different layouts like animation so pretty much this here, you could change like how fast you want something to happen. So I can make this thing go like higher or lower. And I can make it like however long I want it to be. So here it goes way up and then drops suddenly, as you can see in the drop there. So you could easily customize like how fast you want this thing to like come to that point. Instead of being like, like a smooth curve, you could change it to be just a single, like a zigzag line. So here I'm just going to show this as it kind of pops out as a zigzag. Usually this uh, curve editor you can use to make everything look animate a lot smoother or sharper if you want to have a a box just stop immediately or just have it 
or have it come come to a slow stop. And you also have a compositing node where see here you can hit like render image. Okay, as my cube renders, I want to show you what you can do with the node editor. See here, you could just add a node. I'm going to add a well, preview. A preview node, so you can see this in the background. So in the backdrop. So you pretty much have that. What you can do with the nose is you can add color, you can add uh, RGB curves. Like this is a fully featured thing where you pretty much have the image going here, the image comes out. And you can adjust the curves according to your tastes. So you can boost up the reds, bring down the greens. This is pretty much the node editor where you can change settings to make the image better other than just exporting a raw image and having to edit every single one of them in Photoshop.